Hello, my name is Matthew Dewey and welcome to Writing Today. Now in this episode, I'm going to be talking about short stories. Specifically, five uncommon tips that you might not have heard that can help you write your short story. Now this is something I have a lot of experience in. For a year, I wrote a short story every day, so I have a few hundred short stories already under my belt. But even to this day, I still write short stories for my second channel, The Aurora Files. Now, of course, I read mostly thriller stories when it comes to this second channel, but I have written quite a few stories in different genres. So with all this experience in mind, I'm going to be establishing first of all what it takes to write a short story, and then giving you 5 tips that might help you write yours. As always, if you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and if you want to check out my second channel, there's a link to it in the description below. First of all, a structure of a short story. It can vary depending on the genre, but typically you want to convey an idea or a lesson within the story itself. The amount of space that you have within the story is typically from 1000 to 7500 words, but normally a short story is around the 2000 word mark nowadays. So the first piece of advice I have is to start in the middle of the action. If you plan to tell a complex fantasy story, you'll find it very difficult to establish the setting as well as the complex lore and background behind it all. Of course, this is why a lot of short stories tend to break it up into several short stories that again, once more, can simply be made into a novel. But a lot of the times, it's because we are trying to convey an idea that is a little too complex for that small word count. So by starting in the middle of the action, you cut past all of this background information that a reader doesn't need to know or reader can pick up on throughout the story itself. That's not to say that your story won't be effective if you include exposition. Quite a few stories tend to include a lot of exposition before leading to the main story itself. A great example of stories that provide a lot of exposition is the H.P. Lovecraft stories. A lot of the stories tend to build up this idea of a monster, this background information, before hitting you with a punchline-like ending where this monster might appear or this entity from another world. But that's one way of doing it. A lot of short stories tend to have a lot of information they need to convey, but nothing that really ties itself purely to the main plot. So instead of including that information, they cut it out completely and stick to the main plot, where the reader can pick up the details throughout the short story, but without having to go into all that extra information that may add to the world space, but doesn't add to the story itself. It's a delicate balancing act, but for a lot of stories out there, this is one tip I do recommend. Instead of trying to build up the world space, try cutting out a lot of that information, and instead focus on the story itself. Now, a lot of the best short stories tend to have a lot of symbolism within them. This is because we don't have a lot of space to create a long, drawn-out, subtle story with many nuances that the reader can pick up upon several chapters. So in order to make our short story a lot more thought-provoking, we need to include symbolism or allegory to make it that much more in-depth, that much more thoughtful. So when you are writing your short story, think about the symbolism that you want to convey. Think about the meaning behind the characters and their purpose. Now this might seem like you're forcing a message just because you have a short amount of space and that's kind of what you're trying to aim for because you don't have a long story to stretch your message out into little subtle pieces of information across several chapters. So since you have such a short space to work with, a uh, chapter 2 or 3 at best, that means you have to throw subtlety out the window and immediately bring the reader's attention to these ideas whether they are subtle or not. Tip number three is to experiment with non-linear narratives. So this means breaking away from the traditional chronological storytelling, experimenting with this idea, this structure, such as starting at the end and working backwards, or using flashbacks and flash forwards. Again, this is another great way to tell a short story. And a lot of authors tend to use this when they're talking in the first person perspective. So this is one way to do it. You're now talking in the past tense, you're also relating the key points in the story, and sometimes just breaking the flow completely to have the character who's discussing the story with another character explain some finer points or where they were mentally at that moment. 
Of course, in doing so, this allows you as the writer to cut out a lot of unnecessary information and instead focus on the core points that the character itself wants to convey. Of course, this does mean that the reader is going to have to fill in these blanks with their imagination, but that's okay. That's something we have to take advantage of as artistic and creative types. And of course, if we have a limited space to work with, we're going to be taking advantage of it a lot in some stories. Another great technique to add impact to your story is to explore the idea of an unreliable narrator. So this tip is pretty self-explanatory. We have a narrator who isn't entirely trustworthy. Their perceptions, memories or motivations could be skewed, allowing you to play with perspective and offer unique insights into the human psyche. This is a technique that is often used when it comes to thrillers because we like to include twists in our short stories. One of the most common practices, again, when it comes to short stories is making sure the ending is a surprise. It's sort of like, if you're good to enjoy the novelty of a short story, you might as well get a little burst at the end of it. Much like the sour sherbet core inside of a hard candy. For example, the victim in your mystery thriller short story turns out not to be the victim but the killer themselves. Or the inverse is true. So you can either take advantage of those blanks in the story, the moments where the narrator seems unreliable, to really add doubts to the reader's mentality, whether this character is good or bad. I won't be giving you story ideas here, but this is one of the tips that you can use to make your story that much more interesting. So simply take advantage of those moments where the information seems to be excluded, or the information contradicts itself. Do this purposefully, so you have to craft it in such a way it doesn't look like you've forgotten some important details, it looks like that was purposefully done to add some distrust or doubt in what the narrator is saying. Now this is a very difficult tip to adhere to because all we want to do as a writer who wants to convey a cool idea is adhere to concise clarity in order to make sure the reader understands everything that is going on no matter what. But we've got to separate ourselves from it in that way. We're not pitching a story to the reader, we are telling a story to the reader. So that means sometimes we're not going to be completely honest with them. And that brings us to the final tip, which is simply to embrace the minimalism that is often commonplace in writing short stories. Now you see, short stories often thrive on brevity and conciseness. So challenge yourself to convey a powerful story with minimal words. Every sentence should serve a purpose and every detail should contribute to the narrative's impact. By embracing this style, it can lead to more impactful storytelling. There are a lot of writers out there who enjoy writing epics, long stories with deep descriptions and plenty of moments spent on superfluous details that may add nothing to the story but certainly add to the character or the ambiance we are trying to convey. And that's something we simply can't do with a short story because of the limited space. Now this is a tip for those authors out there who are overextending when it comes to the word count or simply stretching their story too far. If you can tell your story with just as much impact in 2,000 words than in 7,500, aim to write the story in 2,000 words instead. If you're going to take a 2,000 word story and stretch it out all the way, all you're going to do is detract from its impact. The only way you're going to maintain your quality then is with your writing style, but all the better for it just to simply leave it at that 2,000 or 1,000 word mark and simply take it and turn it into something that it's not. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found these tips helpful in writing your short story. Of course, there are many more common tips that I could talk about, some techniques that you could use. If you're interested in hearing that, please let me know in the comments below. Of course, if you are an experienced writer when it comes to writing short stories and have your own advice to give to those beginner writers out there, be sure to leave that in the comments below as well. And of course, if you like to listen to some scary short stories, I highly recommend checking out my second channel, The Aurora Files. There's a link to that in the description below. In addition to that, I also have a scary short story book that is for free. There's also a link to that in the description too. I do hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next episode of Writing Today. Good day, good night and happy writing.